Welcome, everybody, uh, to our first episode. Uh, yesterday, if you were attending, you got the opportunity to uh, get our little uh, introduction of this uh, series. Uh, and tonight is the first episode. And the first episode we're doing is who are we and where are we from? So we felt that this was a good start for us and uh, for us to get a deeper understanding because, you know, all of us are playing this game of life. And I know a lot of people do not see it as a game. More and more people are seeing it as a game. But up to this point in time, what they've been seeing it is that, you know, we're here in this body, we're here on this planet, and that, you know, something has put us here, and, uh, you know, we're having this, uh, this, this life and what we need to do for us to be able to even move forward in any way, shape, or form uh, to be able to get our whatever we can out of it, and then we leave. So the one thing is that we've been playing this game of life and going through all the motions of what life represents and so forth, and we tend to take the, the essence of who we are, that you, we had a very good strong taste of it as we were a child, and compress it right down to a whole series of belief systems and ideas and concepts and, and the fact of even forgetting that we're much more than this physical like representation and experience. So we end up playing this game as this is it and we only use our external reference point to define who we are. Okay, And the thing is when we start to define who we are by that set of circumstances or that set of viewpoint, what ends up happening is we make our world very small. We lose the connection that we may have had at different stages in our life or prior to taking on this life and really lose that we are much more than what we are experiencing in a human uh, perspective or what we are experiencing in this human form. So to bring things back into alignment and to really understand a little bit more clearly who we are, then that actually shifts a lot of what we have adopted as ideas of who we are. Now, the thing is, who we are is also kind of open for interpretation because once we come into the body, we open ourselves to an opportunity to kind of see what the world reflects back to us. Other playmates being family and others around us and also anything that we adopt as a way of life and then start creating a picture of this is who I am. Now, many cases who I am is defined by our gender and everything in between that, but the genders are not limited to one or the other or something, a mix of the two or anything of that nature. It is genders based on uh, uh, what we call uh, different traditions and genders of different cultures and genders of different races of, of uh, life and, and so forth. So basically uh, what dictates it is where we're born and who we're surrounded by what a male or female or something in between, moving between the two, actually represents. So that's the first part. So we, we have the gender part. The other part is then we adopt the culture and not only the, we go to the gender, now we're talking about the culture. We start uh, uh, saying, okay, I am this particular culture. I am this belief system. I am from this family uh, tradition and so forth. And we start to uh, label ourselves based on that. Uh, along the way, what we experience in life while we're in school, while we're learning, while we're playing, while we're experiencing different stages within our lives, we adopt ideas that I'm this or I'm that, I'm good or I'm not so good, that I'm a professional in this area, I'm not in a professional, that, I've, that I'm successful or I'm a failure and all of these things, or that in some way we end up feeling that uh, our experience uh, really kind of shapes who we think we are, because this is what really nails it all down to, is who do we think we are? Is it really who we are? No, 
but it is something we adopt. It's something that we utilize as part of our experience to give us the opportunity to have those experiences. Of course, then when we, as we grow up and we go through stages in our lives, we make new choices, choices of career, choices of playing various roles, going into a family dynamic of your own or not, or engagement with friends and, and family dynamics of any sort at this point in time. And then you become a mom or dad, you become you know, a brother or sister, then we become you know, a profession being that you know, I work as a server or I'm actually a doctor or I'm a lawyer or this or that or whatever it may be and everything in between. And we start to label all of those things. There's a grand purpose for all that because when we adopt those things, we limit the channels of what we experience to give us the opportunity to really get into the depth of those experiences. Now, the purpose for those experiences is really to learn from it and to also clear out any particular ideas and concepts that we may have taken on from possibly past lives or in the fact of what we have adopted. See, we've come here in a way to, to experience a transformation, so part of the transformation is to get right into the depth of it and de define ourselves who we are. But that is again very limited. It's an opportunity for us to experience it and to experience it and transition it. And this is what we're doing right now. We're actually going through a powerful energetic movement, a consciousness movement, an awakening, a reconnecting and, and starting to see more of ourselves than what we have used up to this point in time as a reference point, that I am this physicality, that I'm human, I am this and this and this and this, going outside of that. Because if you look at it, when we adopt all those components of reality within ourselves and belief systems and so forth, we actually experience ourselves on that level. So we actually go and, and get to the point where we can experience all of those things that we've uh, created within ourselves as a dynamical, uh, what we can call uh, archaic or let's not call it even archaic, uh, like a, a very elaborate video game that has only certain sections activated, certain parts that we can play with and so forth. So with all of this that's coming through at this point in time, we're basically reconnecting to a knowing, which we already had in there, but opening that part up and realizing that I am more than this physicality. And I'm here to play and I'm here to transform. I'm here to do a lot of different things that we have chosen to, to experience and play. So in essence, what we're doing is remembering more and more that we're outside of this human existence. It doesn't negate the human existence. It does not negate the physical aspect of ourselves. It only enhances it because now you start to realize that you're not the game. You're in to play the game and you can go into the depth of the game you want with a reference point that now you can move in and out of how deep you want to play the game, what parts you want to put into the game and how quickly you can move through the ranges and stages of your life. So as much as you have had all these stages in your life, all of them have served you in one way or another, and all of it has been perfect. However, now what we're going through is we want to upgrade the human experience. We want to upgrade the playground of what we call planet Earth and what we are experiencing at this point in time, or have been experiencing. Now, I will get into the other series or uh, sorry, the other episodes where we're going to talk about the operating systems and so forth and get into the depth of how all of this came about, but not only that, to understand it, how can you shift it and so forth. But the first thing we want to realize, who are we and where are we from? Because that's the other question, because there are people that basically says, OK, well, you know, God, source, uh, some deity or something, you know, created us and sent us here. And here we are, you know, we are here. And, uh, but we come from, you know, a heaven plane or we come from, from a field plane or something of that nature. And in some cases, some people are connecting to other lives that we may have had uh, from a soul perspective and say, well, okay, yes, I was a Pleiadian once, I was this then, and so forth, that's who I am. But the, that's the same thing. The moment you're carrying any of that, you're bringing in that energy and saying, okay, I'm, you know, looking at one label, but I'm just gonna add another label and say, well, I'm this, okay? The point is, you're not. This is the thing. We're not anything 
but we're also everything. And where are we from? You know, if we're talking about the very origin of existence, okay, then we are from the field of consciousness. We are basically source itself, having an experience within its sourceness or in that field, okay? The field of consciousness, the field of creation, the field of energy that creates and sustains everything. So we're never outside of it. So in essence, just because we are coming from there and have visited other playgrounds and became involved with various playgrounds does not mean we are those playgrounds or the roles that we have taken on because it doesn't matter if we were a being on another planet that we, you know, that's who we are. That's not the case. We are really source itself having this experience or whatever experience you may have had before. So when we're looking at it, you say, well, I am what? I am everything that is expressing itself in this created playground and how we've decided to come and play and create this holographic projection and go through the motion of experiencing what we are here to experience. So are we from another planet? No. No one from an origin is from anywhere because when we start look at the origin, the origin itself, there was non-existence. Okay? Non-existence, but there is existence, meaning that there was no playgrounds, and then we created playgrounds and then started to experience ourselves in playgrounds, and the involvement of these playgrounds involved having physical forms as to interact and to explain and experience ourselves within the playground. So it's like it's great to have a playground, but you need to go out and play in the playground. So what do we need as a playground? Well, let's have a vessel, a vehicle, or some way of expressing and experiencing. And that's what these forms are all about. I mean, as much as there's many, many, many planets and many, many different forms of physicalities out there, and many different planes to play with, and all different dimensions, and dimensions really are dimensions of consciousness, how we create, how much consciousness we plug into our creation. All of that is available and all of that is what we've experienced. Now, I'm going to dissect who we are a little bit more so that we have a deeper understanding of how all of this works. The purpose of going into this is not only getting the understanding, but it actually creates a shift in your operating system, a shift in your consciousness, a shift in your mind construct, and it also shifts your own physicality. But not only shifting that, it actually opens up portals of energetic channels of consciousness within yourself. So that gives you the opportunity to really be more empowered in the navigation aspect of your journey and the co-creation of this playground we call Earth. So all of that is coming together. So the, the stimulation that we've been experiencing up to this point in time to really reconnect with ourselves and bring the part that went dormant for us as part of that older uh, way of having the human experience is so that we can actually integrate more of that consciousness and abilities to, to what we can create. Now, it's not about us fully awakening and becoming source again. Eventually, we will choose to do that. But that is not what we're doing. We're just awakening other levels of access and consciousness and still retaining the ability to play on planet Earth in this physicality as long as it serves you. When it doesn't, you can move on and go into non-form for a period of time before choosing another form either on this playground or, or, or multiple multitudes of other playgrounds. See, this is the flexibility. So when we come here, it's not like you've come here, you, you live this life and you're done. You come here, you play here, you experience here. Once you're done, you go on and decide what you want to do. You can come back on the planet, take it on a different form, in a different culture, in a, a different life stream altogether, a, a different gender and through different terms. Or you can choose to go into another form or end up being a non-form and creating a, a space to hold the consciousness and work with other souls that have chosen to, to take on form. There's a, there's a multiple 
a multitude of different choices you will have and the capacities to do so. So this is the beauty of all of this because once you get more of that realization, you come to the point where you see that the options, the availability, the, the, the way you can shape things really open up and expand in a huge way. We're not limited. This is the thing and this is what we start to realize because a lot of times we look at the changes in our life as something very difficult because we're looking at through a very small slit of a viewpoint because of all of those labels, all of those definitions of ourselves, who are we? And, and in many cases, if we abide to a lot of the doctrines that have said, you know, there is a deity and creation and laws and so forth, that then we say, okay, well, we're powerless. We have no capacities. We just are got thrown here. We get to experience it. And if we do it right, we get to go one place. If we don't do it that well, we get to go to another place. And then we, we look at that we're in a disabled way. And some people look at it as a victim. And then, of course, we can throw in karma, which we'll talk in one of the episodes where we're saying, well, OK, I didn't do it so well last time. You know, now I've been punished and sent back here to redo it again and make sure I get it right this time or something of that nature. You could see all of the ideas that uh, play around all of that. So it, the, the, the life we've all been playing for quite some time and some still playing very much so and others are right now feeling that there's much more to that has been all of those labels all of those labels and limitations that we have taken on as part of our experience, which has been absolutely perfect, but now we're getting ready to really shift things along. Now, many of us are feeling these very strong uh, intensities and so forth to break out of these patterns, break out of these old definitions, old versions of ourselves, so that we can step into our true essence of who we are. But that again, like I said earlier, not negating in any way, shape, or form the human experience, because the human experience is very specific as any other experience in any other form on any other playground. However, planet Earth has a uniqueness to a certain degree that has, uh, like all planets are, unique in one way or another, but this one has been brought into another level where polarization and all of that stuff were ex extremely accentuated so that we can really uh, go through a terrain of play and so forth, even though we don't see it that way, that would make it quite challenging to, to move forward. Because some places, some of the planets are a lot easier because you can spend your energies and your focus on self-realization and how can we use those self-realization. Here is getting lost in the game with the slight opportunity of further realization of who we are. But that's changing right now. The fact that you're listening to this, you're already getting that as part of, I feel I have to do that. And that's just where we, uh, you know, you're uh, putting your focus and attention on and saying, okay, here I am. I'm much more than this experience. Because a lot of times what happens is as we take on the labels, not only are we feeling small, then we get engaged in emotional charges and stories about our lives. Because when we don't see the grand aspect of ourselves and how we play roles with each other, then we end up seeing that we really have not only no say in the matter of what we are experiencing, we tend to put our focus on feeling that in some way others have control over us. So the fact that because others are playing with us or involved or there's a system involved or something of that nature, that we have no freedom. And that is an illusionary part as part of a beautiful experience, but you know, here we are, we're stepping outside of that, we're expanding completely out of that realm of play. So to bring it into who are we and where are we from, there's many aspects of it. So I'm just going to, I'm not an artist here, so in essence when I draw people, they're usually stick people. So um, I do this work and I wasn't gifted with the, uh, the skills of drawing when I'm supposed to use a whiteboard. And when I say, I say that loosely. So there we are, beautiful eyes, nose, smile, because we're having a blast. A Couple of hairs for the people that do have some. And so let's do that. We'll give ourselves some arms and hands, and then we'll give ourselves some legs and so forth. 
that's about the extent of my uh, uh, gifts in, when it comes to the drawing. Of course, the head's out of proportion to the body, but anyways. So when we're looking at it, I'm just trying to make a point here, as we're looking at it, we have various facets of ourselves, okay? All of it comes from one essence. However, how these essences came about are done on different levels and are utilized in different ways. So the first thing that we are very apparent of, we have a physicality, okay? So the physicality, we're looking at that and say, okay, where is the physicality from? Okay, how does that come about? Yes, it's in the same field of creation, it's the same field, but there's a representation of an outline, a holographic projection, a light sphere, sphere, uh, sphere of light that is emanating that creates a physical form. So where's that coming from? What is that all about? So if you're looking at the physicality, the physicality is a representation, an emanation of Gaia, the planet. It is our link to the planet. It is the, the vehicle that we use as part of experiencing ourselves on this plane, on this, what we call, earth plane. So when we look at the makeup of the physicality itself, the cellular structures and the way it operates and everything else is very close to what we call Gaia, the planet itself, Earth, all the sentient beings and everything that exists on planet Earth. So the physicality ends up being a representation of that within ourselves. So where does that come from? It comes from Gaia, it comes from that consciousness. Now, the makeup, the creation of it, the, the very essence of that part is a makeup of a, a blend. So if you're looking at it, and I know I'm going to pop some circuits here, and that's okay, just drop whatever's not interesting to you or mind-blowing, throw that out, don't worry about it, just allow it, at some point it will make sense, until then, don't worry about it, just play with it. So what we're looking at, even the physicalities, the physicalities were a cooperation of a team that worked together to say, okay, planet Earth, here we are, we retooled planet Earth, we have created a new upgraded version of this playground, and now we brought in various playmates and various, and when I say playmates, animal kingdom, insect world, uh, reptilians and birds and so forth, and the oceanic and whatever else, and all the different plant lives, okay? So we brought all of that in, we put it into the planet, we made modifications to make it uh, uh, all resonate within the frequency that we're going to allow planet Earth to operate in as a starting point, which of course will upgrade along the way, and now we need physicalities to come and play here. Now, because of the positioning, and I will get into it in another series, we'll go deeper into that, but because of the fact that we wanted to create, a, uh, in this particular cycle of our uh, existence, we wanted to create a physicality that would feel at home with a variety of different species. So what happens? We created a physicality using the very elements of creation that actually create form, and we blended it. So basically, we took five different primaries, prime, or what we can call DNA, or species that were connected to that. And then, of course, we had seven secondaries. DNAs, which are basically uh, information codes that come from various other creations, from other physicalities, from other forms. Once we blended all of that and created that, we, there was a physicality that represented a blend of that to create what we call the human experience, the human body. Within the human body, we've activated a lot of possibilities and uh, capabilities, which, you know, the five different senses, the taste, the smell, the hearing, and so forth, and also the capacity to experience emotions, to experience a lot of different, very sensorial components of the experience of being in a physical form. Really to a point where we're very in touch with not only Gaia and all the sentient beings, but in touch with ourselves and to be in touch with all our brother-sister contributor DNAs because 
these five primary DNAs and seven secondary DNAs, each one belongs to a very sp a specific species from a different planet within our quadrant of our, our, our galaxy, and it was, it was brought in to create what we call the human form. Now, the human form itself not only has that, but it came it's also with a blueprint. And that particular blueprint was a completed design a complete design on its operating system. So here we have a blueprint, a master blueprint, of how the body regenerates and keeps itself intact. But that blueprint and all of that had a consciousness. So what we call innate consciousness, the consciousness in itself, how to maintain that consciousness, not only from what it was receiving from that, but also what was it receiving from the planet itself and all the sentient beings, because we are still receiving that information constantly. And this is why a lot of people talk about grounding and walking in nature and so forth, because we receive much more information from all of that. So that is happening at this point in time. So here we are, we have this physicality that is a beautiful blend, a, quite a creation. Now, when we look at it and say, well, who created that? There were various species which we could have been, any of us could have been involved. I know I was involved from a soul perspective, not as Frankel, that, you know, engineered all of this and designed and said, okay, let's create a new physicality because we retool planet Earth and we've come here to play. So that's create something very dif uh, different um, than before. That's it. Now, the reason we've used also various um, DNAs or encodements or what we call genetic encodements from the different species is that those staying active, we would be receiving and transmitting uh, a communication to upgrade our operating system of our physicality, but at the same time to maintain a connection with the different races that were contributors of their genetic encodements and so forth. So all of that became part of it. So that's the first element and say, okay, well, this is the physicality that we have and this is what has been put into place that we are utilizing as part of it. Now, the second part of it is we had what we call a human entity, okay? And that is in around the solar plexus. So if we're looking at the root chakra, the root chakra is our connection to Gaia and so forth. The sacral is, for, is a connection, what we call, and I will get into this more uh, along the way in different, uh, uh, in other episodes. So we also have what we call the human entity. A human entity is almost like a soul. Basically, that human entity has, um, memories and operating systems of how it is to be a human, okay? It doesn't relate so much with what other dimensional creations exist or the fact of being in other forms. So it basically gives you the operating system of how it is to play on planet Earth. But the human entity also reincarnates and it advances each and every time because every time a soul comes in, and which I will cover shortly, uh, it also upgrades itself. So, in essence, when we're looking at this human entity, what is it? It, yes, it's from a source aspect of it, but it is now tuned and, uh, uh, what do you call it? Tuned and programmed to be uh, reincarnated, but from a human perspective in on human terms, being on planet Earth, okay? So it's basically a version of uh, soul that only uh, reincarnates or takes on form on planet Earth, okay? So that carries thousands of years of progress, evolution, and awareness. I'm not talking about anything beyond 15,000 years ago because, you know, when this was the latest upgrade, that was 15,000 years ago, and I will get into that in another episode. But at this point in time, what was created there is this particular physicality in its encodement required a human entity because the human entity itself would bring experiences from life to life and will also bring gifts or what we can call skill sets. So, uh, you know, when we're looking at uh, uh, people that come in and they're young, they're little children or, or are somewhere along the line and they seem to have a talent of uh, playing a musical instrument or being a, a mathematician or being uh, a scientist or anything of that nature where 
they didn't have to actually study it. Or, uh, you know, in, in a sense, an artist or something of that nature, they just have the capacity to be able to have these skill sets that they've never practiced before. Because that, that particular human entity did bring some of its experiences from previous lives to bring it into this life so that we could expand it and utilize it so we don't have to start from scratch all the time. And it also gives us a good grounding of how it is to be a human because you have a human history. For example, if we're talking about any of us that is a soul that's coming onto the planet, uh, some of these souls have never been on planet Earth. Some of them have only been various peri periods of time that have huge spans of time between one incarnation to another. So it loses touch of how to be a human because in between it may have been incarnating on other planets or have been non-form or so forth. So it relies very much on the human entity to say, okay, you give me the ropes and understanding of how this all works because you've been here and you've always maintained energy, you've been upgrading and you've been communicating with other aspects of what we call human entities. So the human entity aspect of it is the part that gives us a good understanding of how the playground has been and how we've managed in a physical form. Then we have the, what we call the soul, the higher self, and, and there's many, many levels of that. I'm not going to go into the depth of that in this episode, but we're looking at what we call soul. Um, slash higher self. So what are we looking at? The soul itself is basically still again source. Again, it is a recorder an experiencer aspect of source that chooses to play on different realms. So the difference is when a soul comes in, a soul has a very broad expansion or expansive um, experiential realm because a soul can incarnate on different planets and brings those experiences and nuggets of whatever it's experienced on other planets along the way. It's also experienced itself working with other uh, individuals on different planets and non-form and so forth at different dimensions. And some of them are coming from parallel worlds or parallel uh, galaxies or different uh, sections and quadrants of the galaxies or, you know, even different universes and so forth. And some of people call it star seeds and, and so forth. But Every single soul, one way or another, uh, does come from different experiential realms. So that comes into the physicality. So here you are, this beautiful, powerful, higher self soul that is connected to this, this expansion. This is why we, we say a lot of times, you know, meditating, connecting with yourself. Because what happens is you get a viewpoint when you're connecting to your soul, higher self, bigger than this human experience. It steps outside of that on a big scale. So it's not limited to uh, just the human experience itself. It takes on a broader view. And some people have memories, flashbacks and so forth of being on other planets and so forth. Uh, yes, sometimes we romanticize it and saying, well, it was way better there and whatever else. No, there's no better anywhere. They're just all different and they're all opportunities to have different experiences. So the soul itself, uh, you know, brings that uh, part. And I will go into the soul uh, on another episode even further. But what happens is the soul is not isolated uh, and uh, individualized. Yes, it is individualized on a signature of frequency and spectrum of light and how much it can access at any point in time. And that's purposely done by the soul itself, choosing if I'm going to go play there, I can't have certain accesses because it will be hard to play the game and to experience myself in those forms. So it will limit whatever it is. But that particular soul has connections to various other resources. One could be the twin soul, which is an identical signature uh, aspects of itself. It has the same frequency, same everything that could be incarnating on planet Earth, could be at a different uh, gender, can be in different uh, age groups, or it can be a non-form. That's before it goes on to another planet, or it can be on another planet and so forth. Plus, we're also connected to our soul families and clusters, and, and those are, you know, I will get into more detail of that. So it has many, many, many resources that it can utilize. And the third and the next part of that is the overall consciousness, okay? The overall consciousness that is a blend from what we are getting from Gaia, what we're getting from the physicality itself, 
And the physicality is not isolated. The physicality can communicate with other physicality and has connections to it. And how it even, um, each time it, uh, you know, gives birth to a child and another one comes in, it's also sharing the genetic pools from the different, uh, different parents and also from the different energies they're coming from and so forth, right? Uh, and then you have the human entity, and the human entity has many, 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 many lives of experiences that uh, comes into it. So all of that creates this, what we call master consciousness. So we call that a master consciousness. I'm not going to have room to write all that next. So we have a master consciousness, and that's the one that asks the questions. That's the one that we have. We're not talking about the dialogue of the ego, because that's a whole other perspective, all this, the same. So the master consciousness is basically taking all of these resources and experiencing ourselves with a combination. Now, the soul, what it has to offer and brings, helps upgrade the body, upgrade Gaia, upgrade... Uh, the human, uh, what we call uh, the human entity, and also the whole way it plays, the, like the energies that it transmits on a collective scale. So it's bringing all of that to the mix. So this is that's what makes it extremely powerful. Now the same thing with with the human entity. It says, okay, I have offerings here because you have less skills and experience being human. So we're going to. Uh, allow you to learn from it so that you can take it anywhere you go afterwards but working together and the same thing with the body the body has its innate consciousness and it says okay I know how it feels to be in the body I have that connection with Gaia and so forth so all of that becomes a very masterful design of where you know of what our experience so where does all of these things come from well it's all from source it's all from that pure essence of creation, a pure essence of existence. We cannot exist anything outside of what we call source. We can create an illusionary idea. We can carry a, create a spectrum of frequency of polarization and separation, but that's all illusion. And that is only part and parcel while we choose to play with it and utilize it. That changes because we don't have to do that and support it in the same way as before because all of that is upgrading as we go through it. Then we have the last bit, which is basically the ego. And I will get extensively into that on another time, which is artificial intelligence. Probably you guys have been hearing more about what artificial intelligence is. To make things super interesting and uh, exciting in the dance of life and to really give ourselves a challenge, uh, we accept it, and when I say we, whoever was participating at that time, whatever souls were embodying at that time about 10,000 years ago, accepted an offer to be able to take on an operating system and an, a, a, an additional inverted type matrix to have our experience more challenging. And one of the things came, it needed software, it needed something else. So we have the mind, which is the master consciousness. So that's clarify that. That is the mind. I better put this down here. What we call the mind. The mind is extremely powerful and what it can create because it does all the projection. So here, the projection of what we see as our experience. So the master, master consciousness is really the mind, okay? That uses all these resources. And then what we've been doing now is we've been shifting more into the higher aspect and also communicating much more clearly with higher intentions with our human entity and a much higher intention of the, the human body. Because the human body's consciousness has really been elevating in a huge way. And of course, our body's going through a transformation. And we'll get into more details on another episode with that. So it's been upgrading itself at the same time. So all of this is, is assisting on what we are doing through the mind. So what we call the ego itself is also referred to as the mind because it's the operating system that works in the, uh, in the thing. So we have the ego mind, which some people call the small mind.
and then the large mind being the main one. Now, the ego mind, the small mind, is that chatter that we have, you know, all the doubts and all the, the emotional charges and so forth. This part is saying, okay, we're creating whatever, we're working in cooperation here with all of these alignments within ourselves. We're going to walk through this and we're going to experience whatever we need to experience and so forth. And it's also communicating and upgrading itself. The ego mind's done the same thing, but there's two different things. The large mind, with every part of it, has one major uh, intention, and that intention is to evolve, to expand, to become a grander aspect of itself, to really reach higher levels of consciousness and dimensional playness in the playfulness part. So it, what it does at that point, what it's doing, it's always forced, uh, not forcing, but focusing on going into higher and higher levels of beingness and upgrading the playground and also the human experience. The ego mind actually works in reverse. So the ego mind with the inverted matrix, again, I'm just giving you a little tidbits, we'll cover a little bit more of it in another episode. The ego mind itself, its purpose and intent is different. It's about de-evolution. It's about losing ourselves in the game, but it's not just stopping at the game. It's actually creating a new game a game that is very polarized, a game that's very separate, a game that is actually um, becoming more mechani mechanized? mechanized mechanized, in our thinking and so forth. That's why I call it artificial intelligence, because in a, in a way, its purpose is to lose the ability for creativity and imagination. And if you're going to get any creativity and imagination, it's on my terms, okay? so. Once upon a time, until the end of 2019, we had this thing called the inverted matrix. And that was all designed in the same to operate with that operating system. So this gives you a base idea of how that works and who you are and where you're from. So when we're looking at it, this human experience is something of a marvel, okay? And in a way, you've come here for that purpose, to have that experience. Now, we're going to go into the next episode more detail on how all that works. But here we are. This particular aspect of yourself, who you are, is basically, when you look at fundamental, you are source itself expressing and experiencing yourself on different levels of playground and vehicles to become a grander aspect of yourself. As source, there is no good or bad, right or wrong. As source, everything is a play. And even the polarities of light and dark and all of that stuff, right and wrong, good and bad, were created, even though a lot of it was all created within this part of it, is coming together again to basically look at it and go into that, what we call the zero point, neutrality, what we call oneness, in a sense where we see ourselves as what we are, the master creator, because that's who we are. We are a master creator that has created ourselves and are experiencing ourselves in that creation. We're in the field of all sourceness, of all possibilities. And the thing is, the beauty of all of this, and I will cover this in other episodes, the beauty of this, we've gone into a stage of our life where we are transitioning, or we are transitioning to actually use more of that consciousness in our creation. And so it's not so much of a manifestation of what we've created before, or a duplication of that, we're going into new levels of imagination and creation. The other part of it is that we're going to notice that a lot of changes are, are experience, we experience because of the connections we may have or not have anymore, or feeling that in some way we're, we're shifting in the way of importance of what we used to do, or the importance of connections we used to have, or what choices we make, and so forth. But that's just because we're upgrading within ourselves, because we're choosing to really transform that part of it. So 
this gives you an idea that you're not just this experience and you're here now and because what happens afterwards look at it this way if we're talking at the soul once you're done with this experience you leave the physicality and you go back into when we go back you go into that other spectrum of frequency where you are formless and decide later on what form you want to take or not or what role you will play at different stages you are infinite you're never ever non-existing that's the soul the human entity is the same thing if it leaves that physicality it merges with the collective human entity and it, it, and it is just beautiful exchange and so forth of really enhancing itself before it chooses to take on another form and all of this is so well orchestrated the same thing with the body the body consciousness goes back to Gaia within Gaia itself and and uh, what we call planet Earth and, and connects with that so I think they said ashes you come from ashes you go back to ashes or something like that I can't remember ashes, ashes to ashes dust to dust or something like that well that was just kind of a way that they said it, but basically that's what we're doing we're blending back to the energies of the planet on a physical aspect but everything that we've learned and experienced is now going into collective uh, what we call the planet itself which is helping other uh, feed so whatever you are streaming to Gaia uh, it is also streaming to others as they come into the playground other physical forms it also enhances the the uh, consciousness within the innate consciousness of, of the physical form so uh, the question that people come up with is like okay yeah you know here comes somebody they 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 do so much they learn so much and so forth and then they die okay and then all of that is lost not at all because what happens is whatever's been experienced in the in what we call the mind the larger mind into the collective so it's available for every other playmate that's on the playground itself that is allowing itself to be exposed to that level of consciousness the soul itself learns so much advances so much and it carries it on to other lives same thing with the human entity and the body so all of it nothing is lost yes some things become obsolete and it's just purged because it was only the experience that was required it wasn't all the actual details of saying well I needed to have all of this it was just really the fundamental energies that was learned from it and the, the consciousness that was gained from it and different perspectives of how to play so nothing is ever lost nothing ends and all connections are there because even from a from a human entity aspect of it it's connected to all other human entities and all those forms and all the levels of consciousness same thing with the souls okay uh, sometimes we lose loved ones or people that we have had a really strong connection and when we require some input from their viewpoint because they're a non-form uh, or in their different form they will step in uh, they may not appear in a physical form for, for most people sometimes they will just with a knowing or just working with you to work with others to bring the messages or to to share different things so this gives you an idea of who you are and where you're from we're all from that sourceness so was there any questions or any concerns or no, comments or anything about ego death. I don't know if you want to do that later. the ego death yeah. okay we'll, we'll cover that in another episode but what we're talking about what we're doing with the ego just to give you a little taste of it right now is we're basically putting it out of commission so as much as that you know a lot of times people believe and we're going to talk about that in, in other episodes believe that the ego is necessary because the fact if I don't have an ego then I don't know who I am okay well the ego has an interpretation of who you are uh, based on its operating system is it is it who you are not at all so are you going to forget who you are listen you are this larger mind this has more impact than this especially when this part is not in the equation it now realizes that I am not X a B or C or any of those combinations I am infinite being having this human experience and these are the roles that I'm taking on this is what I'm playing with today this is what I choose to play with today and this is the role that I take on and put a representation to it nothing more this is the beauty of it all okay you don't actually lose your identity 
You expand your identity and you don't even make that as a solid identity because in fact that's the last thing you want to do. You want to be flexible. You want to be in a, in a position that you can utilize every part of it. So this is the, 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 the part that we play with when we're actually putting the ego out of commission. So the ego itself has one purpose at this point and I'll cover it again like I said in another episode. Like I said, it's a small mind, it actually creates limits, polarization and so forth. But also, you know, and now all of us have talked about 3D, 5D and all of that stuff. It basically created an environment which we call the 2D state of consciousness, which is basically you're the body, you, you live, you die and that's it. You go through this process. And then we had what we call the inverted 3D, which a lot of people call 3D. It's the inverted 3D. And the inverted 3D, everything works backwards. And I'll get into it more in another episode. If you want more details on some of the stuff, we have workshops that we have done. We've done an introduction, not an introductory, but a baseline uh, uh, workshop that provided us with the opportunity to uh, get an understanding how things work, which I went into a little bit more detail. And of course, the episodes will also provide uh, different details as we go along. And then we did the trilogy, which is basically uh, basically give us a, a deeper understanding of what took place, what are the changes, what we're going through, how we can navigate through it and so forth. Not only our roles, but also how we involved. And we have another one coming on the 14th of March that will actually be hands-on uh, working with the different processes that we will actually spend time to do so. So that, that's available and we'll have it in the, in the descriptions below. Uh, as we go along, so the different access to it. Uh, we also will, as we go along, we will explore more of it. So our next episode is going to be on uh, this coming Thursday. Uh, again, if you can't be anything of that nature, uh, you can always send in the questions at info at francodinicola.com. Uh, Kimberly is going to also post that. And um, not only that part of it, we're also, um, you can uh, watch the uh, video recordings uh, of it on Facebook. There's going to be on YouTube and uh, well Zoom is only for live stream only so there's not going to be anything that you can access afterwards and then we have it also on Vimeo. Uh, we're just bringing all of this stuff in alignment uh, in line uh, at this point so um, use use the uh, Facebook. So the Facebook, you know, it's streamed on my personal page and also it will be, um, a copy will be available on my uh, profile page or public page if you call it that. But we have a page we call Advancing Consciousness Series. That page, that group, it's actually a group. If you join the group, you will be able to see each and every one. The introductory one, the one we are doing right now, and all the ep other episodes that we will be doing. And we're attempting to do three to five episodes per week. We're going to start off with the three and then possibly expand and contract depending on what we can work through uh, and be able to, to provide. But right now we're looking at uh, three episodes per week and we're going to go into more depth. We also ask if you're on uh, Facebook to like and to share so that we uh, reach more people because this is all uh, beautiful tools that we uh, sharing, learning from it will sh create shifts within ourselves. So we're working all together because collectively we're doing this together. If you're watching it on YouTube, please subscribe. If you haven't, put the notification on it. Please like and also add a comment. And you can do the same thing with uh, Facebook. You can add a comment or anything of that nature. Uh, if you're watching it on uh, Vimeo, uh, then at that point you can subscribe or I don't think they call it subscribe. You can follow and also like and, and put a, um, a comment on that. So that allows us to reach more people because the logarith uh, logarithms, I guess they call it, uh, will pick up that the fact that there's a lot of activity on that and then we go through it. And finally, uh, we ask for your support financially and so forth. Uh, so we will have a link for a PayPal contribution. Everything is provided for free um, and we just ask if you feel uh, guided and it resonates with you and want to support the, the, the platform and to support ourselves to, to be able to bring more and more of this content because we are dedicated to bring many, many episodes to really expand your mind and to go into uh, a deeper state. So um, feel free to do so. It's not a requirement. It's, it's really up to you 
if you want to do it. We're, you know, we're here with great love to provide all of this information for you so that you can activate what you already know within yourself. And the final thing I'd like to say is that on Thursday, this coming Thursday, uh, the next episode we're going to look at how are we here and how was it decided? Like what all of that is about. Like why, sorry, it's not how. Why are we here? <laughs> Somehow I had how. Why are we here and how was it decided for us to be here? Because a lot of times people say, well, I don't know why I'm here. Well, we're going to cover that. We're going to cover the process. We're going to cover a lot of details that will give you some more clarity and then give you the opportunity to connect with the why and knowing that you can align yourself much more uh, actively in uh, the direction that you feel guided within you. So thank you again. Uh, if there's nothing else uh, that you want to share, uh, Kimberly, or anything of that nature, then uh, we'll see you on Thursday.